Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So a bit of time has passed already and I've driven 750 kilometers or around 500 miles on the new engine, which means the engine is broken in now and we can finally start going back to regular oil change intervals. So in today's video, we are going to be changing out the engine oil and oil filter as well as talk about how things have been going and how it compares to the V16 Y8 and a couple of issues that I fixed off camera. I also want to talk about a review basically on the rear window blinds that I installed in a previous video. So let's get started. All right guys, oil change is complete. So let's talk about a few of the issues that I experienced after the engine swap. Now, the number one issue I would say is the coolant leaks. Now, after the engine swap, I was experiencing coolant leakage still on my radiator, on the floor, and I couldn't pinpoint where it was actually leaking from. And I kept losing coolant and I thought maybe my radiator was actually bad. So I actually pressure tested the system. Now, what I found out was that all the expensive clamps that I bought to clamp these hoses and protect them didn't work as good as the traditional Home Depot worm drive clamp. So I went to Home Depot, bought a couple of worm drive clamps that actually supposed to damage the hoses, clamped them on and the leaks completely disappeared. So, um, you know, the ones that have the protective layer in there, those worm drive clamps, they don't also, they don't work as well as the traditional ones that actually damage the hoses. Um, and the, uh, T-bolt clamps don't work as well. Um, so those are actually more expensive clamps and I realized that just going back to that old school um, traditional worm drive clamp fixed the leaks. So now I have no more leaks, the radiator was completely fine and I'm not losing ra radiator fluid anymore. Now the second issue that I, I would say um, tops the list is that the distributor. Now if you guys notice on my part two of the engine swap video, Partway through the, that video, this actually switched over to coil and plug. It was really hard to notice, but I did switch over to coil and plug during that time. I wanted to keep it with the original distributor, but I couldn't do that because it was actually failing. Now, how I determined that was during the time I was bleeding out the cooling system, uh, I had to actually apply gas in neutral to warm up the um, engine so that the radiator fan kicks on. Now, while I was doing that, it started hunting in neutral. When I released the gas, it would also die. Um, and it also felt like very underpowered, like it's not sparking properly or something like that, or timing's off. Um, so I determined that it was the distributor. I opened it up and saw that the ignition control module had oil in it. So it seems to be a little bit compromised. So I swapped over to the coil and plug kit from my D16Y8 because it's an easy swap over. It works for all of these kind of engines. And then the issues went away. So this coil and plug kit is actually a lot more reliable now. Um, I wanted to keep it distributor, but all the aftermarket distributors seem to have similar issues. They also fail after a really short period of time. And I wanted to see how long I could last with just coil, coil packs. 
Now, another issue that I experienced after the swap is that while I was driving the vehicle to break it in and all that, in very low RPMs, it would bog. So it would kind of lose power and then it would just jump. Um, so it feels like when you're in first gear and you're not steady on the gas pedal and the car just keeps jerking, that's essentially what it was doing in low RPM in all gears. Didn't matter where it was, as long as it was in low RPM, it would just keep doing that and jerking. It wasn't gonna, it doesn't do it all the time and I didn't get any engine check lights, but the culprit there was the O2 sensor. Now how you guys could test that and if you guys are experiencing similar issues is you unplug your O2 sensor and you drive it with the engine check light on. Your ECU would be running in open loop mode, which means it's no longer relying on the O2 sensor for a tune or to apply more gas or um, allow more air, that kind of deal. So it is running on basically the stock map that's programmed in the ECU. Now, when I did that, the engine completely ran fine. No more bogging, no more jerking. Everything was completely fine. So I replaced the O2 sensor and it's been running completely flawless ever since. So those are the issues that I experienced after the swap. Aside from that, the engine runs completely smooth and flawless. Actually, it's really, really good and really reliable now. No more engine oil burn as well. So pretty happy with the swap. All right, now let's talk about the B18B1 versus the D16Y8. Now, they both drive very differently actually. Um, I actually prefer the D16Y8 because it's a lot more peppy and it feels a lot more faster actually. It feels faster than this and the horsepower is actually about the same. I would say this has 10 horsepower more, but it is also a heavier engine, so it kind of offsets. So being that it offsets is about the same then. It's just that this doesn't have VTEC. Now, when it hit VTEC in the D16Y8, it actually feels really nice and it actually feels peppy, feels powerful. Um, and the shorter gears just make it that much more sporty to drive. This drives smooth and all, but um, it just doesn't feel as sporty. If you compare the two, this is a smooth driving, good daily driver kind of engine. And then the D16Y8 was more just sporty. It feels like you could be ripping it around like in a go-kart kind of feel. Um, this is a lot quieter on the highway, but that's due to the long gears in the LS transmission and all. Um, but between the two engines, I would say the D16Y8 definitely drove a lot better. If it wasn't for the oil burning in the D16Y8, I would have probably kept it. Now, there is a little bit of a difference there. Uh, the D16Y8 was also running a tuned map that I tuned, that I street tuned. So it does also feel better because it is tuned. Um, and this isn't, this is running the stock P75 ECU, which is actually the stock tune on the, on the engine. I mean, it has potential to even boost up a little bit more power maybe if I um, run a chipped ECU and tune the map like I did with the D16Y8, but I'm not gonna do that. I actually enjoy driving this as is with the stock map. And this way it's driving exactly how Honda intended it to drive. So the difference between the two, I mean, you know, the D16Y8 did feel a lot more sporty, but this feels pretty smooth and is actually a pretty good daily driver. Now, only thing that I would complain about is the Hasport engine mounts. This vibrates throughout the car. Now, D16Y8 was running the stock rubber bushings on and brand new engine mounts, but you couldn't feel it at all. It felt completely stock, no shaking at all. This actually completely vibrates the entire car. So when it's idling and at a stop, it feels like the car is really, really powerful because of how, how much vibrations you get from it and how stiff it feels. But it doesn't feel that way when you try to rip it with the car. Um, it actually feels quite slow to be honest, but um, it's not like super slow. It just doesn't feel as fast as the D60Y8. I mean, it's just missing that kind of pep. So that's my opinion on the B18B1 versus the D16Y8. So now let's talk about the um, rear window blinds. All right guys, so about the rear window blinds, I know there's probably a lot of you guys out there, myself included, that think this looks super cool. And don't get me wrong, it does look super cool. However, I would not recommend getting them. They are actually quite expensive for what they are and they're super noisy. So because the car is a lot more stiff with the stiffer bushings and the stiffer engine mounts and all that, it vibrates through the whole car. 
These things are constantly vibrating while I'm driving. Not only that, when I roll down the windows, the wind going into the car will vibrate the, the, the slates here. And the blinds just constantly making noise while I'm driving. Only certain periods of time where it doesn't make noise, but for the most part, it's always making noise. So it's super annoying. Um, I would take them out, but I've already purchased them and installed them. So I thought to just at least run them for one season and see how it goes. But definitely, highly likely, I'm going to want to remove these. Even though they look really cool, they're very, very annoying. So that's my review on it. It works out fine if you like the look and maybe if you just want to stare at your car all the time and not drive it. But whenever you drive it, it is super annoying. Just trust me on that. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helps you guys out. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.